And here we are, folks, for the back nine of round three of the 2020 Great Lakes Open presented by Discraft, the world leader in disc sports. Brian Earhart here once again with Tristan Tanner. And we have some great golf being played right now by our chase card. Yeah, Chris Dickerson is on a heater now, jumping up the leaderboards. I believe he's in fourth place right now. Um, and our other players just kind of not doing anything too special, but definitely still have some time to get their good rounds together. Yeah, absolutely. And moving into the back nine, we have some challenging par threes, but we finished the course off with a chunk of uh, pretty birdieable holes um, and a place to really make a move on this leaderboard. Um, as you can see, Chris Dickerson is six down. Calvin, with a couple rough bogeys to start, is at one under par for the round. Adam is playing solid, but just had one blemish on seven. And Corey, after a hot start, took a couple bogeys and a rough six on hole number seven. But he is battling back. This course has a lot of teeth if your tee shots are not precise. Yeah, it definitely puts a lot of pressure on placement and uh, getting to the spots you want to be. And speaking of a hard shot, hole 10 is mm -hmm. way up and to the right. It takes a lot of angle control to land a disc and get far enough right up the hill on the screen. Yeah, it feels like uh, like a hole 7's approach on steroids. Giant high panning Anheuser. There's really no other way around it. And we had a tough head left to right mm -hmm. on this hole. Yeah, look at that disc flip over. It's And that's the interesting thing about these types of holes is the shape is so challenging. And when the wind picks up, it makes it way harder. Yeah, all of a sudden you have to throw a more stable disc, which then makes it harder to hold over. Yeah, and we don't throw this shape much on tour. There's not many tee shots where you're throwing this high and this Anheuser with a disc, hoping it pans out to a hilled green. Yeah, this is generally, if we have this approach on tour, it's generally going to be more of like a scramble type shot. Yeah. And Corey's was so close to landing flat in circle one, but got that cut roll. Calvin going a little bit more inside. That looks better. That looks like it might pan. Ace run. Wow. Oh, yeah. And that is perfect. Landing mm -hmm. flat. No hyzer, no anheuser. And Chris in that middle chunk of trees. It looks like he has a little bit of an opening. A lot easier than some other lies I've seen in there. Yep, and he's just trying to put that one under the basket. No need running that. No, hitting metal on this green is proven historically to not be favorable. Oh, my okay. gosh. That was... That was huge. That was an awesome putt. Let's rewind that and... Uh, Across the valley, CT way focus. uphill. Wow, that is an incredible putt. And I guess he's continuing his uh, Hall of Fame classic putting now. Yeah, no need for that hat on when you're <laughs> making putts. Here's Corey from about circle two's edge. And he wants it. Oh, and he knows... The moment you hit metal on the screen, it's a pretty weighted coin toss. And there he's coming back up. Yeah, this is one you really, if you're playing aggressive, you want to make it dead center or air ball. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like you want to putt Anheuser at this basket so you don't hit the ground rolling. But uh, it's... <laughs> It's kind of pick your poison at this point. Pick your natural putting stroke or adjust it for the for the miss, which you really wouldn't do. Definitely. Calvin after a beautiful tee shot in this wind. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, this hole averaged a 2.99. So despite being one of the more treacherous greens and tee shots on the course, players are still saving par pretty consistently out here. And we move into kind of the reverse uh, mirror image of the last hole. Hole 11, uphill push hyzer with a fast flippy disc to kind of shape this uh, interesting uh, fairway that we have here. 
Yeah, it takes a very specific shot because you do want to disc on a lot of hyzer right out of your hand to shape the gap, but then get up straight and yes. work up the hill. And Adam going with his straighter force, which I, I love the disc selection here. And that's pretty a pretty fortunate kick to get back out closer to the fairway. It gets pretty rough over there to the left side. And Calvin throwing almost an identical shot. And that's the hard thing about this tee shot is you have to get the disc moving left right away or you're hitting that tree right in front of you. But you also can't have it moving too left. So it's a very, very uh, challenging shape for the players to throw. But if you do have a pro level skill set, this is definitely something you can get. Pump fake. Pump fake. <laughs> he visualizes his lines very meticulously, so definite respect for that. Yeah, and he does the same routine every mm -hmm. single time. Get around. And he hits that same grouping of trees. Yeah, and almost when you think your shot is perfect, just hugging that mm -hmm. left side, there's another set of branches just behind those ones yes. we can see that end up catching your shot. Yeah, and they actually almost stick out farther, but you can't quite see them from the tee pad. And this is actually a, a hole and tee shot that Corey really excels at. He loves throwing steep hyzer flip, and this force he has has just the right amount of high speed under stability. We're hanging out with the catch cam for a bit. Lower line, good skip up to edge of the circle. Great approach there. It's really hard when you're on a knee from that low below mm -hmm. the basket. It's hard to judge distance and really get it all the way up there. Adam with the zone, and I, with this uphill fairway, I wonder if he's going to be running the basket on this one. Just a layup there. Mm -hmm. Some of those low ceiling hanging branches really make it tricky to almost, you almost want to run it from down there, but it just doesn't quite line up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a great birdie to get. Again, like a lot of these par threes on this course, they feel like bonus birdies. You want yes. they're very birdieable, but in in practice, you feel like you can get them in execution. It's really pretty tricky. This whole stretch of you know even eight through twelve, just really hard, very demanding par threes where you could get all of them if you're on fire, or you could get none of them and even have a bogey stroke sprinkled in between. Um, very, very tough stretch of the course. And we finish it off with, I think, the hardest par three. One of the hardest ones we play all season, I think. Yeah, this is a, a downhill, left to right moving shot. You really want to push these left side trees on a hyzer angle. A lot of players are going to be taking that forehand or lefty backhand line, trying to push under these limbs and just get some sort of look at this basket. But it's it's just really tricky mm -hmm. when you think you throw it perfect you end up hitting something and when you think you miss your line you end up you're getting down, down in there so there's that middle tree with some low-hanging branches behind the one that we're looking at that makes the forehand a lot more of a attractive route i think if that those branches were trimmed a backhand turnover for a righty would be a better line but as you can see they're just trying to play it really low And Adam may be reconsidering his career, maybe going to clown school. Yeah. But decent shot. He'll have an up and down for uh, for a par. 
And if you do go to clown school, then I wish you luck, Adam. But please stay in disc golf. See, all these players kind of making a similar mistake, getting around the tree but not quite getting that flip up that you need to yeah. push down the gap. And Calvin is going to have himself a little putt. Chris taking a little bit more inside line with a little bit of Anheuser, inviting that skip. And there that we go. A beautiful shot. That's how you want to play the hole. Yeah, I think he played his with a little bit more flex out of the hand, so he pushed it straight. So when it was running out of juice, it started hysering rather than just hysering the whole flight. Great bid there from Corey. Mm. A little bit of frustration from Adam. I think his putting has been giving him a little bit of frustration recently. Oh. And he continues. Yeah. That is an awesome birdie on this hole. Yeah, do you know how many birdies there were on the day for this hole? You know, I do, actually. Let's take a look here. Only 6% of the field birdied the hole. Yeah, and that really, I think that's probably one of the higher numbers for the weekend. Yeah, and on the day, I believe we had eight, I think we had eight birdies on the hole, and Dickerson was one of them. And I am looking at this list of players who birdied the hole, and almost all of them are power sidearm players. Yep, or lefties. Introducing the Innova Adventure Pack. It's one of Innova's best all-around backpacks. It's lightweight, yet holds up to 25 discs. Its strap and back padding allow for all-day comfort. You'll find ample storage in its four zippered pockets. It features a towel ring, drink compartment, and Primestar logos. The bottom and sides are reinforced for more stabilization. At $39 MSRP, it's the biggest bang for your bag bucks. Moving into hole number 13, after our tough stretch of par threes, we have a pretty gettable par four. Really allows you to unleash probably the biggest tee shot you can on this whole course. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be moving up this hill. It's a really long approach shot, and this basket is tucked way more left than you think. Yes, and there is that little sign at the top of the hill that players use as a reference point. And I think it's very, very worth uh, getting your shot to a side of the fairway that gives you a preferable second shot. And as you can see, Dickerson is opting to go kind of with a distance turnover to the right side, and that gives him a much straighter look at the basket. So I really like that. If you're going left, you're having to throw a lot more of a tight hyzer line. Yeah, and you see players on this hole really just taking their most, their stock distance shot, really. Exactly. You see a lot of players trying to play just a long hyzer flip or some sort of turnover, but yeah. it's really just whatever you're comfortable with to get the distance to the bottom of the hill. Or if you want to just slam a flex with a force, I suppose you can do that as well. Adam just juices this drive. He is on the upslope of the hill. That's going to be a nice, potentially standstill approach for him. Calvin, I would assume, throwing one of his destroyers. And again, great placement on the right side of the fairway. Chris asking it for it to miss the sign. And it did. Yeah. Like you said, that is an aiming point for a lot of these players. Corey taking a little bit more of an inside line. Just getting a skip over those ropes, mm -hmm. which is which is great. And Calvin looks like still going driver from Pretty far up the hill. I actually like the play. He kind of down-tempoed on it and put a little Annie out of his hand. And that's a wasp from Adam. That is Ooh. a signature wasp. Park job. 
great shot from Adam and Corey from about 35, 40 feet. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. That catch makes up for the spit out <laughs> on yes. hole number four. Great putt. Chris with another birdie, keeping that heater going. That's a good birdie from Calvin. If your tee shot is solid off the tee, the approach to the basket is not too difficult. So it's great to see the players taking their birdies here and moving on to the next hole. And we kind of begin this birdieable stretch on the course. Yeah, hole 14 is the easiest part three on the course. 375 feet, but probably plays more like 330 down this hill. This is the gap everyone's going to be trying to take just a little bit longer the basket with some sort of overstable mid or fairway driver. Yep, and this is actually the easiest hole in the course, averaging a 2.67, 0.33 strokes under par. Not too much danger here unless you do get caught up early. And that guy actually gets a little bit lucky through the trees, but that's a perfect shot. Mm-hmm. Corey going a little lower and more outside. A little bit straighter of a disc. Gets a little more glide right to left, and that's another perfect shot. Adam going wasp again, it looks like. It was clean. And shout-outs to Simon Lazat actually parking this hole with a Skamahawk in round three. <laughs> Really? One of the craziest disc golf shots I've ever seen. Calvin going a little early. He still might have a putt at the basket. Yeah, he actually hit the base of the elevated pin with a skamahawk. <laughs> That's super impressive. There's a par from Calvin. It's always tough to have your par putt longer than everybody else's birdie putts. Yeah, it's one of those little tricky mental parts of disc mm -hmm. golf. Oh, and they are potentially doing a synchronized tap-in. Oh, wow. Beautifully coordinated there. Wow. What do you think? Definitely 10. 10. 10 for sure. What do you think flatness and stiffness on this? Somewhat flat, neutral stiffness. Danny, this is a sick one. Dude, I gotta get through all these today. Cheers to a good day, gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, that's that's good. good. That's a hard day. That's great. And here is the second easiest par four on the course, third easiest hole in general on the course in regards to scoring spread. Hole number 15 has danger left, I guess. Not too many players are finding the OB. A lot of players are just throwing kind of a sawed off hyzer forehand, safe putter shot. Really, regardless of where you land in the fairway here, you can run the basket. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot of distance off the tee. It's definitely more about placement. Yes, absolutely. And that is a picture-perfect sidearm. That's going to get a flare. And, and a roll. Okay. And shout-outs to Noah Meinsma for actually eagling this hole with a throw-in, I believe, in round two. Yeah, not many players were going for it this weekend. Oh, Corey, so close to having a great flare and just got too forward of a skip. And Adam might actually get right of that tree. 
Yeah, and there's mm-hmm. a little bit of an inside gap that no one's trying to play for. No. But if you happen to do it, it does leave you still in position to get a birdie. Calvin's worried about the OB. Okay. Wow. That is a fortunate break there. He'll get to take his meter from out of bounds. Corey goes putter, and it's just left of the basket about 30 feet. And it did sit down for him. Yeah, Adam seems to just have a little bit of like anxiety on some of his shots right now. Mm -hmm. Not quite playing the round he wants to, but that still is a putt for birdie. Calvin getting up and down pretty easily. And then Dickerson almost at the bottom of the hill. This is a scary putt from Corey. Oh no. oh, no. Another one? I have seen two spit outs this round on a Chain Start Pro, and those are the only two I've ever seen. I, that same, is so same with me. I have never seen dead center spits like that. I feel for you, Corey. Great putt there from Adam taking the birdie. And again, a, a long putt with a sloped green after watching a nasty pop out. You see both Adam and Chris have, putting it a little lower in the basket, yeah. probably because of that. He's just got to keep his head up at this point and just keep moving forward. He is even for the round after a couple nasty sixes. Calvin is just moving nice and steady. And we move into hole number 16, which begins kind of our home stretch. We have uh, a straight ahead par three. A lot of players are taking this straight route. Subtle hyzer flip up the gap. Adam, we did see in round two, I believe, take a stall hyzer over the top. But not too many other players are going for that. I think with the wind picking up, we won't see that too much. Yeah, also with the wind, I would expect more players to maybe be going mid-range as opposed to putter exactly. down this fairway. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you see Adam is going with a wasp to fight this wind. <gasps> oh, no. Seems to be losing a little bit of focus. Yeah, and that's one of those ones where... When Get in you the hole. That looks great. Beautiful shot from oh, Calvin hitting the base. That's pure. You hear the disc come out of Corey's hand with so much that speed. That could go in. Wow. That was potentially an anger throw right there. He smashed that thing. Dickerson for five in a row. And he is on a charge. That he, boy is on fire. He wants to have a shot at this win. And I wonder if Adam potentially just practiced that over-the-top hyzer so much that maybe the, the straight-ahead gap kind of intimidated him, not necessarily in a way that he doesn't think he can do it, but more that he wasn't practicing it or anticipating having to throw up the gut. Yeah, that very well could have been his first time throwing it this year. Here's Corey after slamming the chains for ace, hoping to get revenge on the basket here. Deep sigh of frustration for Corey. Kind of an up and down round for him.
Hole number 17 is par four with a big tee shot, really able to just unleash, trying to get to this flat area just past the ditch there. And then it's gonna leave yourself with just an uphill approach, probably mid, mid range or fairway driver, depending on where you are. And this is a tricky one. A lot of people end up edge of circle short or in circle yep. too short. And the wind is ripping out here. Dickerson just takes a really low line trying to fight the wind and play this fairway. And he's done that to pretty much perfection. Calvin is looking to probably rip this with some pace on the on the disc. And, and <laughs> he said it for me, that is bad. And even on this distance shot, Corey is a third up the tee pad and smokes this force. A oh lot my of gosh. turn. Wow, and that is moving fast. That is huge. He generates more power with such a short run up than anyone I've ever seen. And Adam also putting a move on this one. And I think it's low enough to where he won't challenge the out of bounds. Yeah, he's got enough distance on that oh. one where the, the OB isn't a problem. He might get to flick a zone on that approach shot. Calvin going backside of the tree. That's a great that's, standstill. That's an incredible shot from back there. Chris probably going mid range. Maybe fairway driver. That's a beautiful shot. And he is just very in control right now. And like you said, Adam is flicking his own, and he is actually far enough up where he can just go hyzer. And just didn't put enough flat angle on the disc. Going uphill, it just makes it that much more stable. Big shot there from Corey and Adam from about 25 feet uphill. Mm hmm. Great to convert on that one after leaving your approach a little bit short. Ooh, and they even gave him the birdie uh, notification, but that did chain out left. And I think that birdie notification was for Chris because he did snag a three on that one, and he is feeling it, <laughs> to say the least. And here's Corey from that distance. I'm sure he's probably shaken up quite a bit after the past couple of nasty putts popping out on him, taking its time. Yeah, this came out with a little bit of flutter. I think he's just ready for this round to be over with. Definitely, but that's a great putt, that's especially a great putt. after a couple spit outs. It's really hard to trust the basket. And he was telling me he was really trying to focus on uh, each shot. And here we are, hole number 18 at the toboggan. Super uphill, dogleg right, low ceiling, guarding this basket, way tucked back to the right. OB all along the left side, as you can see by the ropes. Uh, righties uh, got to get creative if they don't have a giant sidearm, and Chris is doing that. That's an incredible roller inside the circle, long of the basket. The angle for that is just so, so difficult. Even to just lay the disc down. And Corey is, th oh no. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and that's, uh, that's kind of how we feel for him as well. That's a good line right there. Inside, hopefully get a skip. Just outside the circle. Great through mm. fighting through that branch a little bit. 
Corey might be trying to give this one a little bit of a run. That's a beautiful approach there. Oh, yeah. Stay up. And he battled back after some rough, uh, rough shots off the tee and still shot a nine down, which is a fantastic score to finish up with. Yeah, only five pars on the day. And that boy, Chris Dickerson, seven in a row to finish at 13 under par, and that is putting some pressure on the leaderboard. Calvin saves a six under par. Not a stellar round for him. But I will add, Dickerson making that seventh birdie in a row now forces Eagle McMahon and I think Kevin Jones, who are in contention, to birdie 17 and 18 for the win. Yeah, huge round from Chris uh, to put pressure on those leaders. And here is that putt from Eagle. To go 33 under par for the win. Yeah. And funny story about this putt. Eagle actually did not know that was for the win. Eagle thought that was to tie. He did not know what the scores were before that putt. Wow. I guess uh, ignorance truly is bliss sometimes. So he thought he was tied with Ricky there. And there's a little smile from him. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the 2020 Discraft Great Lake Open champion, Evil McMahon. I won? <laughs> I won? <laughs> he had no clue. What? That is such a treat to watch as a commentator. What an incredible moment in this sport. Confirm scores. Who told me I, I was tied with who? Ricky? With Chris Dickerson. Dickerson? Yeah. <laughs> That's why you don't... Well, that was an unexpected ending, and I am pleased to have gotten to watch that. Chris, incredible 13 under par to put the pressure on the leader. Rest of our card grinded out uh, whatever round they could. Look at that. Just incredible scores on this course. Yeah, thank you all for tuning into this coverage. And uh, be sure to subscribe to Gatekeeper Media, like this video, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. We will. We'll see you next week.